the more I look at health, the more that you cannot create health without stress and some bit of destruction. You've heard the concept, no pain, no gain, or what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. I mean, what's up with that? So today I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive into this term hormesis. Now, what is this term hormesis? What does that mean? It's a term to describe two things that might oppose each other in outcome. And I'm going to give you a lot of examples, but you know, I think we all know that um, when we exercise, we're creating destruction in ourselves. And then the outcome of that is something that's stronger. It's healthier. It's more fit. So hormesis is really about a controlled dose of stress. And deep inside our cells, we have this very interesting uh, adaptation mechanism. And the system that actually is controlling this is part endocrine system and part autonomic nervous system. So both of these work together to help your body adapt to becoming stronger. And the key word is adaptation. And you probably heard of the concept of um, survival of the fittest. It should be called survival of those who can adapt the best. So with hormesis, you can adapt from various stresses, radiation, exercise stress, cold stress, heat stress, like sauna, things like that. Also reducing your oxygen and increasing your CO2 can create a hormetic effect. And even various plant chemicals, a lot of different insecticides, pesticides, and even fungicides. Of course, they're in very, very low doses because they're meant to kill these small little insects. But when we consume them, we're creating a hormetic effect. So let's just take, for example, sulforaphane, like in broccoli sprouts or radish sprouts. What it does is it triggers certain proteins, certain chemical pathways. One protein that it triggers is called a heat shock protein that activates certain things that allow us to strengthen our detoxification enzymes. So here we are exposed to a small dose of a poison that strengthens our own ability to get rid of poisons. In our liver, we have these enzyme systems called phase one, phase two detoxification, where we can take a poison and turn it into a harmless particle. Well, guess what triggers that system? The sulforaphane, this poison. You're causing all these different enzymes and proteins to then rebuild and repair. And so the rebuilding and repair mechanism won't occur until you trigger it. So in other words, exercise induces microinflammation that then allows our bodies to get rid of inflammation. And then we get into this wild concept of starving our bodies, right? We call that fasting. And all of a sudden, all of these amazing things occur. Our brain cells start growing more. Our mitochondria starts increasing in number. Our immune system gets regenerated from new stem cells. Deep in our genes, from years of adaptation, the different mechanisms that were strengthened and created to counter starvation so we could survive. Because when you think about it, starvation can kill you if you go on too long. But short term, it's amazing. Same thing with exercise, right? You can overtrain to the point where you're completely dead, right? But just a little bit of exercise is really good. Same thing with cold therapy, right? I mean, think about it. It's only so much time you're going to be able to spend in this, uh, you know, 35 degree temperature before you're going to have problems. Each person has their own individual tolerance for certain stress that they can take uh, to be able to do this. We cannot create health just by being sedentary all the time and doing nothing. Now, there's some other interesting counterintuitive things about health too. And this is not a hormesis thing, but it's just very counterintuitive, right? Because we used to think that if we cut the amount of fat that we eat, then we will lose our fat. Well, we found that that didn't work because people tend to change the type of calories to more carbs, right? And then that converts to fat. Then we have another concept of the more sugar that you eat, the less sugar you will eventually absorb. Why? because your body develops this adaptation, this resistance against it. It's called insulin resistance. It's like a protective mechanism. Our blood only really has about a teaspoon of sugar in it to be normal. An average person consumes a lot of sugar, so we're dumping all the sugar, and this is not normal. So our body protects itself with insulin resistance to the point where now you can't really absorb sugar that well. And it creates problems because now the brain cells, for example, can't get fuel, 
and then you have all sorts of issues. Another counterintuitive situation is becoming more sterile. The more that we clean our bacteria and get rid of bacteria and sterilize ourselves, especially when you're growing up as like babies or small children, the more you set yourself up for getting sick, the more allergies you get. Kids that live on farms have very strong immune systems. Kids that are overly clean get sick a lot more often. I mean, you can't create a strong immune system if you never get sick. The action of getting sick exercises your immune system and creates your defenses. And the same thing goes when you take an antibiotic, right? You're destroying, getting rid of all this bacteria. And what do you end up with? An overgrowth of pathogens. You have stronger pathogens that are now resistant against that antibiotic. So it comes with a package. And then you have um, like when you take antacids, right? And then you end up with more heartburn. How can that be? Well, just understanding the mechanism, what causes heartburn is this acid that is regurgitating up through the valve. It's called an acid reflux, right? It takes an acid to get rid of the acid. <laughs> when you take apple cider vinegar or betaine hydrochloride, you're going to find your acid reflux goes away. Why? Because the true cause is a lack of acid, not too much acid. When you don't have enough acid in your stomach, the valve doesn't close. Here's another one. This is interesting. When you don't expose yourself to the sun, you put yourself more at risk for getting certain types of cancer. Now, wait a second. We've all been told that the sun causes cancer, right? Well, maybe not. The sun gives us vitamin D. A vitamin D deficiency really can set you up for cancer because it lowers the immune system. We need the vitamin D desperately for every single part of our immune system. Here's another one that's interesting. The more dieting that you do in your lifetime, the more weight you're going to gain. And that's really a truth. When you start to diet, especially doing it incorrectly, you start to develop this extreme efficiency with your metabolism to the point where it becomes very, very efficient. It can run on just a little bit of fuel. That's why it's so hard to get rid of the fat now, to make your fat cells more inefficient. The term for that is called mitochondrial uncoupling, where you're wasting a lot of energy. And you can do that with getting in the ketogenic diet. You can do that with doing fasting. You can do that with cold therapy. But an efficient metabolism is created from going on lots of diets. So the theme of this video is you cannot create health without some a bit of stress. And exercise would be a good place to start. So if you want to check that video out, I put it up right here.